Good evening. I'm Megan Wolf. And I'm Jeremy Dawes. Our main headlines tonight. Daddy, it's starting! Get yeah, every single one of you's a bit Jesus. What a wild ride this has been. Well, that's a very blunt question. But France is lying to you. Friends and neighbours, and have confidence that the team will keep you safe. But now you start to see, yes, eh? The people never happy. It's never enough.
Sabotage. Jenny, problem? I want her fired yeah, today, today, now. Don't worry, Kath, it'll be all right. No, it won't be all right, Kath. Pack up your weapons of optical destruction and get out. You realise you're beginning to sound... I mean it, Kath. Stay where you are, Kath. Jenny? Uh, this is not Jenny's decision, Jeremy. Or yours. It'll be all right. I'll talk to Bucks. Oh, good. You can tell him I'll return his wife's castle dish at our dinner next week. Jenny. I'm sorry, Kath, you're going to have to leave. You're letting it go to your head. She nearly blinded me. Ten seconds, everybody! I thought you were part of a team. Jeremy, you know that. Just stop being so high and mighty and do your job. You'll have me fine, three. Don't tempt me. Good evening, I'm Megan Wolf. And I'm Jeremy Dawes. Our main headlines tonight. The establishment strikes back. The World Council has agreed today to impose punitive sanctions on the people of this country. The sanctions, which are broad ranging, include restrictions on the supply of oil and gas, food, clothing, and even some medicines. But how should we react? We ask the public. What do you think about all these sanctions? I doubt it make a lot of difference, Pet. <coughs> I've lived through two world wars and I smoke 40 a day. And if that ain't killed me, I doubt this will either. Thanks, Patrick. Fascinating stuff. Popular Prime Minister Julia Salisbury has released a reassuringly brave statement in response to the World Council's controversial announcement. This international declaration is nothing short of outrageous. We are a democratically elected government with massive popular support. We do not recognise these sanctions and we encourage other socially progressive nations of the world to both resist and ignore them. Advance have struck fear into the heart of the international community by showing that it is possible to have radical change for the betterment of the many. And whilst I...
You're fired. What? You're fired. What for? Facial sabotage? Jenny? Problem? I want her fired today, now. Don't worry, Kath, it'll be all right. No, it won't be all right, Kath. Pack up your weapons of optical... ...destruction and get out. You realise you're beginning to sound like me? I mean it, Kath. Stay where you are, Kath. Jenny? This is not Jenny's decision, Jeremy. All yours. It'll be all right. I'll talk to both Oh, good. You can tell him I'll return his wife's casserole dish at our dinner next week. Jenny. I'm sorry, Kath. You're going to have to leave. Letting it go to your head. She nearly blinded me. Ten seconds, everybody. I thought we were part of a team these days. Things are better, Jeremy. You know that. Stop being so high and mighty five, and do your job. Four, You'll have me fired three, too. Don't tempt me. Good evening, I'm Megan Wolf. And I'm Jeremy Dawes. Our main headlines tonight. The establishment strikes back. The World Council has agreed today to impose punitive sanctions on the people of this country. The sanctions, which are broad ranging, include restrictions on the supply of oil and gas, food, clothing, and even some medicines. But how should we react? We ask the public. What are your reaction to the sanctions? What are your reaction well, to the fucking outrageous. My mom needs insulin. Am I supposed to get her transitioned? What's the government doing about it? Hey? Uh. What's the government doing about it? Thanks, Patrick. Fascinating stuff. Thanks, Patrick. Popular Prime Minister Julia Salisbury has released a reassuringly brave statement in response to the World Council's controversial announcement. The World Council's controversial announcement. This international declaration is nothing short of outrageous. <laughs> We are a democratically elected government with massive popular support. We do not recognize these sanctions. And we encourage other socially progressive nations of the world to both resist and ignore them. Advance have struck fear into the heart of the international community by showing that it is possible to have radical change for the betterment of the many. And whilst I wish we could improve other countries as much as we have our own, we do not rely on the help of others to fly. This country is entirely self-sufficient. We are a team, now more than ever. And this team is on your side. Thank you. Defiant stuff. But what do you, the public, think of our government's stance? Robin Short found out. Robin Short found out. Hi there. Robin Short, National Nightly News. I was wondering if I could get your thoughts on the current government. I'm not really very interested in politics, really. As Mother always said, leave politics to the politicians, Malcolm. A Flard Day's Night. Following the release of the Flard Master 5000, production of Flards are at an all-time high, requiring the new manufacturing facility in Grizzleford to move to 24-hour-a-day production. With people finding more and more uses for the ever-versatile Flard, the team at Rewington Cyst certainly have their hands full of keeping up with demand. So, is there anything better than a handful of Flards? We asked Patrick to find out. Patrick? Do you have an opinion of Flards at all? Oh my god, I love Flards. Isn't everyone? Do you even remember when we didn't have floods and we had to rely on words? Oh, I'd never go back. Oh, I'd never go back. The delicate sound of thunder. A frightening start for commuters this morning who were confronted by a somewhat sinister sight as they left their trains. 
Many travellers reported feeling intimidated by the silent figures who stood motionless outside every major station in the capital. Radical extremist group Disrupt, who organised the show of strength, refused to comment on the meaning of the strange protest. I want to apologise to this presenter for making him drop his morning beetle in surprise. But how do we feel about these somewhat radical extremists and their upsetting methods? Robin found out. Can I ask your opinions on Disrupt? Are those the guys in black with the orange fist thing? That's right. Can I be honest? Of course. This is journalism. They scare me a bit. Feast or famine? Resourceful doctors David Wong and Ingrid Spores Borgen Horgensford today announced their first successful harvest in Dante's Taint. Although they can currently only grow a few fungal strains, the scientists seem to be staying positive, as the following picture shows. The undauntable scientists chose to try and survive in the cave system while the complex rescue operation inches forward up here on dry land. Let's hope they like strong enough. But with Advance planning to spend an eye-watering amount of public money on the rescue craft, we asked Patrick Bannon to find out what we should all be thinking about the accelerating costs. What are your thoughts on the costs of the rescue? Oh my God, Patrick Bannon, wash your mouth out with soap. You can't put a value on human life. You have to spend whatever it takes because one day you might be trapped in an underwater cave system and you would want exactly the same. Uh, I don't think so, actually, because uh, for legal reasons, we're actually not allowed within 31 yards of the coastline. I am not a number. Applications finally open today for the new Advance Team membership cards, a scheme by the government to allow fast access to all the new public services being introduced daily. The team membership cards are entirely voluntary, but will be recognised as legal identification by all major organisations, including the police, banks and, vitally, pubs and bars. And of course, there's no charge, Jeremy. It all seems too good to be true. Well, you've always been a cynic. But most importantly, what should you, the public, think about the new team membership cards? Team membership cards? I don't really join things as a rule. As Mother always said, membership is mostly for unmentionables, Malcolm. <laughs> and finally tonight, back of the net, Popular sports personality Johnny Hounsleeves and his fiancée Tiffany Lamour were spotted out today doing a little shopping for what many are already calling the greatest wedding ever. We can only assume that Tiffany's latest show, My Teenage Secretions, has sold better than expected, as by the looks of things, the whole affair is about to become more expensive than Lil C's shoe collection. I don't know who that is. But what should your opinion be of this extravagant display of wealth? Oh my God! Wise words there. Later tonight, in a bit of a switcheroo, it'll be Jeremy in the culture chair, spitting rhymes with popular rapper Jay Zuss. And then we'll both be chatting with a familiar team of thespians set to take the nation by storm again. That's all coming up on tonight's National Nightly News. Thankfully, some news as we return to our main story. The World Council today agreed that punitive and potentially illegal sanctions should be imposed upon this country. The sanctions, which come into effect immediately, aim to stop the flow of food, fuel and even some medicines from reaching your pockets. Tonight, we have guests from across the continent to discuss this unprecedented situation. For advance, Peter Clement is at his home in Lanfordshire. Are you there, Peter? Yes, I can hear you, Jeremy. Thank you for having me. A momentous day, Prime Minister. Are you shaken? Oh, I don't scare that easy, I'm afraid, old son. And neither do the people of this country. Well, joining us is Ivan Vodovich, Foreign Minister of Urkistan. Ivan, thank you for being here. A great pleasure. You, Megan Wolf. Are like strongest guard of labor camp who wake up inside body of crazy expensive prostitute. In my country, you may be worshipped as a god. Okay. Uh, Minister, as one of those arguing most strongly for these sanctions, how do you feel about Advance's defiant stance? Advance is like man who thinks he has a big career in movies land. When actually he in dirty sanitarium, screaming at mirror and holding tiny penis in hand. <laughs> He's clearly not from Friendland then. 
We have like some of the cleanest mental health care facilities in the continent, yeah. <laughs> and welcome to Svenland's Minister of Mojo, Björk. I'm sorry, we don't appear to have your surname. It's just Björk, yeah. We don't use things like socially divisive surnames here, yeah. Minister? It's just Björk, yeah. Right, um, Björk. Your country spoke in favour of advance at the World Your Council today, but you were noticeably absent when it came to the actual vote. Well, what a surprise. The hippies didn't show up for the prize. Actually, that's quite racist, because if you must know, we were going to go to the whole like boat thing, yeah? But it's actually the festival of Furelands here at the moment, where we honour the old generations. So, like, we all had to look our grandparents clean, yeah, whilst the boat was happening, and that's like a really, really time-consuming process, actually. You're like a sissy man. You have this expression, sissy man, is like man with tiny penis who like to wash more than once a week. <laughs> Actually, that's quite homophobic, yeah. Oh, because... stop winding him up, Ivan. We're not back at the Grange now. Sorry, Jeremy. Ivan and I used to play golf back in my media days. Yeah, he always win. Nothing gives him greater pleasure than grinding people's gears. The more publicly, the better. <laughs> Peter, you're like man with tiny penis who think he have tiny penis, but actually he discovered that. Uh, oh, could it be? No, it's tiny penis. Ivan's just worried that when the rest of the world sees how well we're doing, they'll notice all that dosh that he's got squirreled away. Because that's what these sanctions are, Megan. They're the last pathetic gasp of an establishment in collapse. Wolves at the gates, Ivan, old mate. Good. They can join others on my wall. Actually, in Svenland, we have like serious animal welfare legislation. And like my friend Helga, she got arrested yeah, for killing a butterfly that was hovering over her fuel thing. I mean, in English, uh, jam sandwich. I used to know a girl called Jam Sandwich. She was a right cracker, too. I wonder what became of her. We seem to be wandering a little from the news here. Yeah. Um, human interest, Jeremy. The real people behind the headlines and all that. So uh, if you're watching, Jan, give us a call. Yeah. Let's see if we can't organise a reunion. Chris, uh, I'm, I'm not sure about that. I, I'll have to run it past sure Mrs Clement first, eh? <laughs> Peter, you're like man trying to empty ashes of her uh, mistresses into oncoming vent. Uh, soon you have tiny penis and beard full of secrets. In Finland, we don't really go in for all that restricted monogamy stuff here. We're kind of flawed, actually. OK, well, it seems that we are running out of time. Yes, so before we go to the break, and um, briefly, if you would, gentlemen, with the people of this country facing shortages and, and power possible, outages. Possible shortages and power outages. Yes, of course. Thank you. Um, possible shortages and power outages. Can you summarise your thoughts for us, uh, Minister Biak? Well, from here, yeah, you all look a bit stupid really arguing about outdated devices and concepts like money. In Finland, we replaced currency with a system of bodily fluids back in the 1970s, and that's like a really hard to sanction, actually. Thank you, uh, Minister Votovic. Your country is like man who thinks he invented perfect trap for giant Newton hairy bear. But really, he's just standing in field holding, holding his tiny penis. Yes, thank you, Minister. And finally, Prime Minister Clement. Let me talk to your viewers here, Jeremy. Don't worry, everybody. Don't be afraid. Don't even lose a wink of sleep. We knew the rest of the world would react this way, and we're ready. As my old man used to say. You can't make a shite pie without blocking a few toilets. Thank you, Prime Minister. Reassuring words there. We'll be back. After these messages. We'll be back. One After minute back. Hey, Peter, I over your way this weekend. You fancy a quick nine? Yeah, sure, front or back. <laughs> That's what I hope you're asking Megan Wolf for me. <laughs> She's out of your league, mate. That makes other countries uncomfortable. Well, you have to be more careful. It's all part of his long-term plan to get fired live on the news at six in front of the nation. Can someone warn him it's going a little too well? The abundant, nutritious food we grow right here in the Territory. This is important. New government censorship should show up in blue. Same as regular censoring. Keep an eye out for the advanced blue waveform will be left behind so you can carry on coming together to enjoy life and make wonderful memories are you still meant to bow to foreign royalty what should i just like curtsy Come together hang on have they given you the crown prince report well megan 
This is Jeremy, and he'll be interviewing you. Oh. Yo, thanks for having me on your show, man. It's, it's kind of right. Yo, just a quick one. You're not going to ask me about the chimp, are you? Live in what? 10 seconds. Because he put that get up on himself. I'm just saying. <clears throat> going in five, four, three. Welcome back. I'm Megan Wolf. Welcome Later, back. we have an exclusive first look Later, at a theatrical sensation exclusive. everyone's going to be talking about. But first, everyone's it's time to go over to the culture but spot with lovely old Jeremy Donaldson, who's lovely joined by a very Donaldson. special guest. Jeremy. Special guest. Thanks, Megan. I have the honour and privilege of being joined by hip-hop royalty. Joined He's by been called the son of the streets and the, the father of truth. Um, not sure how that works, but whatever. Let's welcome Jesus. Hey, thanks, Jeremy. Yeah, it's a real honour to be here on your show, the news. You know, as a kid on the streets, I used to watch you for a window of the shop, so to be here right now is crazy. Mm -hmm. um, you've had quite the journey to be here today. Can you tell us about it? Can you tell us about it? Oh, you know, I try not to... Um, well, oh, you know, the past is the past, and I don't like to dwell on it. I understand. You but yeah, man, the streets is all I remember. Like, yeah, man, my mother donated me to a charity shop soon after I was born. An elderly lady took pity on me. You know, she let me sleep on a pile of crime fiction until I taught myself how to walk. Wow, that's uh, quite the childhood. And she died, like, died tragically. Right there in my arms, man. Right there in my arms, man. You know, I remember a tear falling as she laid there next to the used homeware. And in that moment, I became a child of the streets. I was just 18 months old. What a tale. What a tale. You're known for your direct and honest lyrics. Was your style informed by your troubled past? Oh, like I said, I, uh, I try not to talk about it. It's just, um, it's just too hard. Of course, I... But my first album is about the story of the first four times I stole, so I wouldn't starve. A small group of infants came to see me as their de facto leader. They call me Mr. Cheese Slice. Anyway, we were like a family. So it would seem. Recently, you've been quite outspoken about the government. Yeah, fuck the government. Fuck advance. Fuck Peter Clement. What is it that you object to so vehemently? Well... You know, they stole from us. They're taking our money and spending it, man. Redistributing it. Actually, homelessness has been all but eliminated in the last couple of months. So? Surely that's a cause close to your heart? that's a cause close to your heart? Yeah. Nah, of course, man. Very much so. I just mean, like, why do I have to pay for it, you know? Why do I have to pay for it, you know? You don't. People have been rehoused on property seized from the historically wealthy. And that couldn't have been you, could it? Look, yeah. I worked hard to be here. I built this from nothing, and I deserve to be rewarded for that. Would you say you worked harder than, say, a farmer or a care worker? I don't know. But if people are taking something from my music, choose to value it, buy it, who's to say I don't? And no one can take that away from me. Not even to help, say, vulnerable children? Mr. Cheese Slice. <laughs> what is it you're trying to say? I just don't understand why you've placed yourself I politically. I mean, is it ideological or is it tactical? Well, it's more of a... Or like maybe it's hereditary. Well, like Stop trying to tie me in knots with your words, Jeremy. I let the music speak for itself. <laughs> and the people agree with me. Well, that remains to be seen. But you have given me a very easy segue out of a conversation that I promise you was much more painful for me than it was for you. So here he is with his hit song... Mrs. Ludlow's Tears. Oh, no. Um, I'm going to do something a little different. It's a new single I've been working on. Oh, so this is uh, unapproved, is it? Yeah. You love it. Excellent. Don't worry, we've got a state-of-the-art censorship system. What's the worst that could happen? So here he is with a new song. Not really lucky. It's Jesus! First, you're going to pay all. You're gonna pay back.
Well, we're all different races from many different places. At any given moment, only one could be the greatest. So you can feel elation from your participation. Still two leaders in this motherfucking nation. Now we're getting sanctioned. Talking about expansion. Why does Julius require a massive fucking mansion? So fuck all your schemes. I don't need your freaky team. And I don't need your help to achieve my fucking dreams. So don't make a fuss when you find you're one of us Yeah, every single one of you's a bit Jesus And you can call me crazy, cause no one ever pays me But I won't waste a lifetime being motherfucking lazy I may be inventive, my taste may be expensive But why would I get out of bed with no fucking incentive Although it's contravention of your obvious intention I like to eat a little of the fruits in my invention You make us the same, but we're not all the same All our dreams, all our schemes, all our means are not the same the best of the praise of the press of the wave Cause we're only equal people when we're motherfucking slaves Take this fact, gonna stain it red Gonna slam it into Peter Clemens motherfucking head Cause he's thick as shit, he's got a job, he's unthinkable It's time to stone a castle with a motherfucking bitch for Say this is for the snuff ones, the push and the shove ones The folks that feel the burden of their motherfucking loved ones the Ones who had plenty like a motherfucking Bentley The ones who now finding that their bank accounts are empty The ones with aspiration, who had to flee a nation The ones who built a business that are dreams of perspiration There's all sorts of people, the good and the evil It only takes a glance to see we're not all equal you make us the same, but we're not all the same All our dreams, all our schemes, all our means are not the same And the best of the praise of the press of the ways Cause we're only equal people when we're motherfucking slaves Gonna take this fact, gonna stain it red Gonna slam it into Peter Clemens' motherfucking head Cause he's big as shit, he's got a job, he's unfit for Sucks to all the castle with a motherfucking bitch for Get out of your seats, get your asses in the street Set a fire in the building, let him feel some fucking heat Take your hate to gold getters, the squillin' bit getters And burn them on the powers of advances fucking letters Gonna take his facts, gonna stain it red Gonna slam it into Peter Clemens' motherfucking head Cause he's thick as shit, he's got a job, he's unfaithful Time to stall the castle with the motherfucking bitch for Chase that dream, you don't need a fucking team And advances little dancers on as harmless as it seems Cause they're stale and corrupt, they your angry Jesus there with his new song. Jesus there. Thank you so much for joining us in the studio. Thank you so much for joining that, us in the studio. I'm sorry. That, um, I'm sorry. I might not agree with um, you, but I'd just like to offer you an apology. You, just I've just been told that there was some kind of issue I've upstairs. And an attempt was made to censor some of your lyrics. What? Are you joking? I'd just like to say to you and everyone at home that this was a mistake. This is absolutely ridiculous. I cannot believe this. Here at the National Nightly News, we pride ourselves on remaining neutral, unbiased and independent of any outside interference. You have my word. We will never censor ideas. Back to you, Megan. <laughs> Well, a bit of dangerous language there, sorry about that. <laughs> well, thank you to little Jeremy Donaldson for providing our culture spot. Coming up, we'll be speaking to a couple of familiar faces about their upcoming dramatic outing. Don't go away. We'll be right back after this. That's the ads. Jenny, this is fucking outrageous. Thank you so much. If you could just come with no, me. No, no, this is ridiculous. Who do I complain to? Uh, this is just a mix-up, I'm sure. Now, if you come with me, I really do have to ask oh, you to Oh, trust me. My father's going to hear about this. I understand. <laughs> this is unbelievable, Megan. I don't know what you're talking about, Jeremy. Just a reminder. Fixing that old VCR. Dropping a new tape. Last ad break. Fiddly to get in place. Oh, that sounds bad, Brad. There, there has, has to, to be, be a, a better, better way. way. And now there. Oh, here we go. 
Oh, oh shut up. Stop it. Look at him. If we could just get you in position. <laughs> oh, say no more. Say no more. Brilliant. Jeremy, you remember Mr. Algebra? Vividly. And Mr. Ooh. Harris, and this is Ms. Raiden. What? Philippa, please. You're back together again, eh? Who'd have thought it? Uh... Perhaps a lower order demon. Yes, it is awfully exciting, isn't it? <laughs> right, OK, then. We're going live in 10 seconds, opening on camera one. Welcome back, and no, you're not mistaken, sitting across from us are some very familiar faces. You really are too kind, too kind Megan. It was only a yoghurt commercial, but I'm still proud of it. Here to talk about his new show, we're joined by national treasure Tommy Harris, the national theatre's Philippa Ray and national deficit Jeff Algebra. It's so lovely to have you all. Um, Tommy, would you like to tell us about the show? You know what? I'd bloody love to. It's about me. It's about my life. And where did the idea come from? So, right, picture this. Um, their legs are kimbo, mid-session, sweat is pouring out of me like an immense hog. And then Cindy comes in, she says, she says, Pete's on the phone. That's Peter Clement, the Prime Minister. Yeah, yeah, Pete's actually a really good mate of mine. Oh, is he really? Yeah, yeah, no, he comes to training sometimes. He's actually a pretty good goal sweeper. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, Pete, he says, he says, Toby, can he thinks my name's Toby, see? He says, how would you like? to spread your message of team spirit and cooperation across this fractured nation. How would you like to really make a difference in these desperate times? What did you say? Yeah, right, yeah. So, Jeff, the question on everyone's lips is, what in God's name are you doing here? Ah, well, after the success of my debut work uh, and all the people that I've touched, I knew that I had a, a career in theatre. Yeah? I've always been an admirer of Tommy from afar. So when my manager phoned and said that I'd been offered the gig as director, I was ecstatic. I whipped my trousers off and got straight to work. Why did you do that? I, I do all my best work with my trousers off. Yeah, I've been told that too. No, no, I wouldn't say so. Right, Tommy, um, sorry, would you just give us a sense of what the show is actually about? Uh, it's about how hard it's been for me and some of the struggles that I've faced. It, it like, really getting to the heart of how tough it is to be me. I call it Tommy Harris, Jesus, that was hard. Mm. Jesus. Catchy. Uh, we actually have some clips of the process of the show. Um, would you mind telling us what's going on here? Yeah, so the show is, is, is built around uh, two things that are very important to me. Uh, it mixes scenes from my life uh, as well as epic fantasy retellings of scenes from my life. But Dad, you promised you'd come to my graduation. I'm sorry, son. You're an embarrassment. But Dad, you promised you'd come to my graduation. Back, demon! Back to the hells! Demon! Back to the hells! Philippa, um, what's it been like co-starring with Tommy Harris? I've always dreamed of treading the boards at medium-scale regional theatres, Megan. And for once, this show really gives me something to sink my teeth into. What was different about this show, then? Tommy, uh, Mr. Harris's show really lets me show my tremendous range as an actor. I've always suffered from typecasting, forced to play the same tired characters in every god-awful yoghurt advert or godforsaken soap opera or, god forbid, a pantomime. But, you know, this, this, this show has really let me just, just go there. Jeff, the viewers at home will be dying to know exactly what is it that you bring to the show. What is it? Oh, that good you question. Uh, I think these guys would agree with me when I say that it's my uh, my steady hand on the tiller, my arm round the shoulder approach that's really brought the production from strength to strength. Absolutely right. Jeff's contributions are immeasurable. He was our rock. Can you give us a sneak peek of anything else that might be in the show? <laughs> Yeah, all sorts, yeah. Uh, yeah. We've got lots of exclusive first-hand experiences of Tommy's time in the underground sports board scene. And some epic fantasy retellings of Tommy's time in the underground sports board scene. Am I 
Singh saying this was officially commissioned by the government? Yeah, yeah, all, all paid for by the taxpayer, which, you know, to be honest, is actually a lifesaver, really. Yeah, I think it's fair to say that without Advance's support, we'd have had to cut the finale. Yeah. Which, frankly, would have been a travesty. Which, frankly, would have been a travesty. Oh, God, Jesus Christ! Oh, goodness, and you did us every night. Absolutely. It's a metaphor. For what? Yes. And the public are footing the bill, are they? <laughs> Too bloody right they are. Between the cost of my tour bus and the dry cleaning of my ties, I'm barely scraping a profit here. Amazing. And where can the folks at home come and see this for themselves? We're performing all over the nation. And people can see it for absolutely free, all courtesy of Advance. Isn't that incredible, Jeremy? Yes. It's unbelievable. Yes. Well, thank it's you all so much for coming. Next time we see you, no doubt, you'll have taken our jobs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's all we have time for tonight. Join us tomorrow when I'll be interviewing the world's most attractive horse. I'm Jeremy Donaldson. And I'm Megan Wolf. And from all of us here, have a peaceful night. That's the ads. Let's get reset for tomorrow, please. Hey, we must stop bumping into each other like this, eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah.
We're working on it. What, you've got someone to hose down the sun, have you? Yes, they've just strapped on their wax wings. Classical illusions are no substitute for air conditioning. You know, I genuinely thought you'd be in a better mood. She's not even here. Yes, but he is. Our gun-toting handler. Who, Andy? I don't know what the fuck his name is, do I? Can you hear to keep us safe from people like this rock? More like Cuba's in line. Oh, the world's on fire. <laughs> that good enough for you? Going in five, four, Three. Good evening, I'm Jeremy Donaldson. Our main headlines tonight. Siege mentality. The World Council today established a military blockade to enforce the unjust and punitive sanctions now entering their 10th week. In a statement from Team Headquarters a short time ago, Prime Minister Julia Salisbury issued a commanding response to this unprovoked escalation. The World Council should make no mistake. This blockade and the illegal sanctions it seeks to enforce are an act of war and will be treated as such. Any incursion, however slight, into our territory will be met with swift and deadly force. You have been warned. Three's a crowd. It seems the celebrity wedding of the decade might have been a touch busier than expected. In a photo leak today, it appears the union of football star Johnny Hamsleeves and his bride, Tiffany Lamour, may have had a few uninvited guests. Scores of drunken revellers gatecrashed the star-studded celebrations and seemingly caused something of a stir. The group swarmed the dance floor in what one onlooker called a conga of shame. At least three people were taken to hospital with injuries described as bouquet-related. In it to win it, Exciting news from Advance today with the announcement of a new monthly prize draw for all team membership card holders. Every month, lucky winners from across the country will be picked at random to receive what Team HQ are describing as unique prizes worth more than money used to be. Take up on the scheme has been much higher than expected, and if this lucky winner's delighted face is anything to go by, it looks like pretty soon everyone's going to have to have one. Kiss me, Fardy. The nation's favourite all-rounder, the humble Flard, has risen to new heights today after a surprise announcement. The news that Flard fans all over the territory have been waiting for is finally here. In a statement met with universal delight, Remington's fist unveiled the next chapter for that faithful family favourite, the Flard. Lawrence Blunderclatch and Helena Canterbury Boatshoe, rumoured to be mortal enemies, are to reunite to celebrate their one mutual love in Die Flard, the movie. Self-confessed Flardy, Sophia Remington, said, It's only right that the real hero of our age takes centre stage in this no holes flawed action thriller. Oh, Captain, my Captain. Progress today for the stranded scientists of Dante's Taint, as the Captain leading their rescue mission is announced. The trap team have survived in the cave system for many months now, but hope is on the horizon as the expedition leader is announced by the Board of Underground Theoretics. A respected professional with decades of experience, training and knowledge Captain Audrey Aerospace is said to be the only real choice to successfully save the troubled scientific excursion, but an unfortunate one to be sat next to at a dinner party or social occasion. Burning down the house? The capital was put on high alert last night after disrupt terrorists set an emblematic fire in the heart of Parliament Park. Violent conflict broke out at the demonstration after a mob of so-called protesters from the radical group launched an unprovoked attack on community cohesion officers in attendance. With the methods of this increasingly violent rabble becoming ever more extreme, many are asking if the military should intervene. Colonel Phineas Mad Badger Fortingly Davis of the 1st Mounted Bastards Brigade said his men were, and I quote, oiled up and ready for action. All this, and I'll be talking to some people with fascinating medical conditions, as well as one of the contenders in this year's Feline Football Championship and her proud owner. That's up on tonight's National Nightly News.
badge to every cop. Are coping with this unprecedented hot weather. First, let's go to Megan Wolf in Shining on Sea to see what the scientific community has to say. Megan, how's the weather there? <laughs> Absolutely glorious, Jeremy. Thank you for asking. I'm here with Dr. Anna Burns from the University of Princeton. Are you enjoying the weather as much as I am? Oh, yes, it's wonderful, isn't it? My eyelids are sweating. And you're part of a team carrying out a study into just what's causing this unbelievable heat, is that right? Yes, that's correct. Yes, we want to be able to reassure the public once and for all that there's absolutely nothing to worry about and that they can enjoy their sunstroke and fossil fuels in peace. You sound very confident about that. Oh, very much so. I can say without any hesitation, there's really no cause for any concern here. I I've actually left my car running. <laughs> so tell us about this experiment. Ah, well, we take data from weather stations from all over the world, along with atmospheric samples, and we take all that and we feed it into this state-of-the-art computer, and very soon we'll be getting a high-tech readout of the results. Blimey, well, that sounds very fancy. Ah, I should just say, um, uh, none of this would be possible without the generous support of Rivington's Fist. This is all thanks to their unrivaled investment in our future, and may I just say, complimentary personal anecdotes. Oh, here we go! And, ha, as expected, everything is absolutely fucked. Hang on. This... This can't be right. Uh, right, but uh, obviously you said a second ago that everything is actually fine, so... Yeah. Well, actually, under concern level, it just says, Why, God, why? We should be celebrating these wonderful results, I think. <laughs> yeah? We need to evolve gills within 40 years. You look thirsty. Here it just says, Shit, shit, shit. Look at you. This is meant to be a celebration. You can't go around looking like that. Shit, 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 shit. There you shit, go. Shit, Much shit. better. Can I just say thank you again to Sophia Remington for <laughs> providing all of this. Everyone, we don't have long. Time is running out. It's running out. out. Absolutely right. That is all we have time Abandon for. Abandon hope and return to the forest. Abandon hope and return to the forest. Uh, enjoy that. <laughs> I'd like to thank Dr. Burns for just one opinion on the climate. The sea will reclaim us all. There you have it, Jeremy. <laughs> proof, if proof be need be that everything is just fine. I'm Megan Wolf, here with science. Back to you. Megan Wolf there, attempting to do some actual Megan news. Wolfe. Next, heads over to Robin Short, Next, who's in Scritchford with some of the winners of this week's team membership lottery. Robin? Thanks, Jeremy. I'm here in Scritchford with Gary Failsafe, a janitor at the local school, and Amelia Jackhammer, an aspiring poet. Both of you were drawn at random from those who hold team membership cards to receive this week's amazing prize. How do you feel? Filled with fervent euphoria. <laughs> yeah, good, yeah. And all that we had to do was fill in a form or two. Wow, that sounds so convenient. But we're all dying to know. What have you won? That's right, Robin. I've won dinner with Julia Salisbury at one of the capital's top restaurant. Ooh, swanky. And I've been invited to Peter Clement's house to help him dredge the gutter in. That's absolutely terrific. You must both be over the moon. I've written a poem about it. So, can you tell me about the moment when you first heard the news? Well, I was battling against a particularly difficult floater, probably one of the six swarmers, when the headmaster came and found me. Oh, I was involved in a similarly brutal conflict with a particularly arduous stanza. So you were both polishing turds? No, I don't like to polish them. I like to keep them intact for my collection. Oh! How unexpected. <laughs> I don't polish turds. I write poetry. Potato, potato. So, Gary... Do you think Peter Clement's going to let me keep the contents of his downpipe? There's no harm in asking, I suppose. Well, would you like to hear one? No, thank you. Gary, when you signed up for team membership, was it in hopes of winning the lottery, or were there other reasons? I like a flutter, of course, but no. The boss said I had to sign up to keep coming into school. Very sensible. It's important to know who we're trusting around our children. Oh. I have an unpublished book of sonnets about children. Perhaps you'd like to hear one. <laughs> no! Or an anthology of haikus on the death of innocence. I'd rather hear about Gary's turd collection. <laughs> really? <laughs> I thought you might say that. Oh. Oh. Are you all right? Yes. 
It's coming. It's inspiration and it's delicious. Mm. Right you are. Mm. Today on the show there's no news. Just a man who keeps multiple coups. Yeah. Yeah. This big one's my favourite. See how it's fibrous and really lovely texture. <laughs> Would you encourage other people to enter for their chance to win? Uh, if it's colour you're looking for, take a gander at all blue eyes here. The national news lost its way when it covered some crap on a tray. Some of these are quite rare. Maybe that was unfair. And that's all we have time for today. <laughs> Back to you, Jeremy. Thanks, Robin. What a lucky pair they are. And finally in this segment, it's over to Patrick Bannon, who's gone to the smelliest town in the country to see how the unprecedented weather is affecting the locals. Patrick? Hello there, Jeremy. Hello, yes. I'm here live in Grizzleford, which has recently voted the smelliest town in the country. And I have to say that, you know, in this heat, the smell really is. I mean, it's, 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 it's something else. Barry Lardons, mate, you've lived here your whole life. How'd you put up with the stink? Well, we're just all very proud of our achievement, to be honest with you. You can tell that, look at him, proud as fun. Do you know what it's like, son? Being the second smelliest town. No, I don't. Living in the shadow of Arsminster. I oh, smug fucks. But who's laughing now, eh? <laughs> what, not me, that's for sure. So what happened, mate? Uh, right, the good people from Rillington's Fist came in and saved the day with their factory. You're talking, of course, about the newly built Flage factory. Yeah, they gave us this big presentation on jobs and growth. But as soon as we heard about the stench, we paid them whatever they wanted to put it here. I think not affect your life in every way, Barry. I mean, perhaps if you're filling in a tax return or completing the physical act of love. <laughs> it's strong at first, but you get used to it after several weeks of your first bout of sickness. The judges were very impressed. So, oh, what, what, what's the sickness? Uh, oh, that's nothing to worry about. It takes a few minutes before you develop any symptoms. <laughs> Now, folk are saying something about the production line and how they dump carcasses directly into the water main, but I think it's probably a few valves on the high street. On the high street? Uh, should I see a doctor? What, what are the symptoms? Well, the first one is asking stupid questions. <laughs> then folk experience a lot of inhibition. Fuck <laughs> off, do they? When was the last time you brushed your teeth, this stinking old tramp? <laughs> ah, next according is a period of randomly bursting into song, followed immediately by delusions of grandeur. Oh, I thought we were from a little song of my life. Hello, it's sexy Patrick Bannon, and he's wearing sexy shorts now. Oh my God, look at me. I'm like a stallion. I'm gorgeous. Why didn't you tell me? I should take my shirt off. You know what? I'll even let you touch me if you want. Uh, oh, that, that will be the bout of undeserved self-confidence. <laughs> Love the Bannon. Feel the Bannon. <laughs> oh, man, what's the and the ennui. <laughs> now, all that's left now are the hallucinations and unconsciousness. Now, got it. Is that you? Why are you made out of elbows? You know I don't eat opinions. Ah, ah. Oh, <laughs> don't worry, folks. Uh, once he wakes up, he'll be just fine. We'll just find a place to stick him where it won't matter how many times he evacuates his bowels. Right, that's all here from Grizzleford, a town that's really making a stink. I'm Barry Lardons. Back to you, Jeremy. Thanks, Barry. With well, a naval blockade being set up around our coastline as we speak, when we come back, I'll be talking to three members of the general public who appear to be here purely for medical reasons. Don't go away. Unless, of course, you've got something better to do. We'll be back after these messages. One minute back. Well, that was stupid, even for you. I don't care. It's done. I am done. It's 200 fucking degrees in here, and I can't do this anymore. You say this every Friday. I've done something. What do you mean? Jeremy? My mic is still... You can expect the government to require... 
request some censoring during the next section. Obviously, we can't force you to do it, but it would make me and the powers that be very happy if you just comply. That's what I'm talking about? Cats were brought? We should be doing an interview with the War Minister, or a report from Grantham Downs. Even the weather would be more fucking relevant than this. Jeremy, please, just breathe. It's just something like to keep people's minds off things. Exactly, which is wrong. People's minds should be very much on things. Christ, it's so fucking hot! Please take your seats as quickly as you can. I can't do this anymore, Jenny. I've had enough. That's it. This is just Ten seconds! Get over yourself, Jeremy. Why don't you stop feeling sorry for yourself for five fucking... Five, four, three... Welcome back to, to the National Nightly News with me, your host, Jeremy Donaldson. Later, we'll be talking to the captain of the territory's first cat football team, Professor Pumpkin. But first, I'm joined by three guests with some balmy bodily behaviours. Joining me is a woman who's been hiccuping for over nine months. Isn't that right, Miss Piercy? Yes, that's right. <laughs> Yes. Tell us, what brought all this on? Well, it's all a bit of a blur, Jeremy, to be totally frank with you. So I was watching your show and I remember seeing the news about the election. And it, it, it hasn't stopped since. Fascinating stuff. Also here is Frankie Steampipe. Um, perhaps you could explain to us exactly what your physiological foreboil is. I'm here to say it's high time people like me were respected. We're constantly overlooked in the workplace, we're whispered about on buses, and we're asked politely to leave children's birthday parties. And it's disgusting. I, uh... I'm sorry, my bowels are not timing. And finally, I'm joined by a man who answers every question honestly, even when it isn't aimed at him. How do you cope with that, Mr. Truman? With a combination of booze, self-hatred, and hardcore pornography. Is that right? Not according to my therapist. <laughs> well, in that case, um, let's speak to Rose. Tell me, how does the hiccuping impact you? I get shushed a lot, which is hard. hard. Don't forget about that pesky poo button on the phone. It's really affecting my confidence. Well, I find it really fucking irritating. People tend to believe your story? Fuck no. Actually, I've been surprised at how much support I've received. <laughs> and Frankie, um, why have you come here today? Because my wife left me and I was hoping that the fame would win her back. We've started a group for people with ailments deemed broadly comical by society. It's called Take Us Seriously. That's right. And we, we bloody well mean it. <laughs> and who's joined so far? A bunch of fucking losers. It's just us. And how much success have you had? Well, we've seen some real positive changes. I don't want to toot my own horn, but it's been a runaway success. Shit all. Not a single person come to our fun run, and all of our leaflets fell in the canal. Huh. Well, Miss Piercy, um, some people are saying your condition was actually caused by the shocking events of that night. What do you think? Come down, Mr. Donaldson. That's absolute rubbish. What it'd be like to have a pair of tits. <laughs> Could you? Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. It's very odd. What was I thinking? That you're a team fuck puppet. No. Or a sellout cunt. <laughs> Apologies. Just reminded that he can help it. And hey, if this isn't live television, then what is it? Fuck fest of propaganda masquerading as journalism. <laughs> <laughs> Right, Frankie, Rose, tell us, how can the viewers get involved with your cause? Yes, we're holding a, a sponsored run in um, Capital <laughs> the Park uh, next weekend. It's called the No Smiles 13 Miles. No, it's called the No Laugh Half. What did I say before the show? That it was the team pulling Jeremy Donaldson's strings. No, I, I didn't say <laughs> Well, didn't say we may have to end that there, unfortunately. What a harmless bit of fun. <laughs> Steady on! <laughs> this is exactly what I'm talking about. We demand respect! Ah, uh, yes, well, later, I'll be talking to <laughs> Professor Pumpkin, a ginger tabby with a world-class pair of penalty paws. Is that really necessary? No, it isn't. Let go! <laughs> Not you! I'm hand him at once! Is you? Oh, enough! <laughs> That's enough! <laughs> enough! <laughs> oh, what are you doing? I'm trying not to piss myself. Alex, cut the Don't you dare! Don't you fucking dare cut to the ass before I tell you to. Now, you in the broadcast centre. Both was lost game. You listen to me. You cut to the ads before I tell you to, and I will kill every single person 
in this studio. I am thinking about what I'm doing. I've been thinking about it for a long time. We all should be. Christ, it's so fucking hot in here. Do you remember when we used to do the real news? Before it was all lottery winners and bloody cat football. We are on the brink of a siege, the likes of which the world hasn't seen in hundreds of years. The enemy is at the gates, and I'm stuck here talking to these three fucking idiots. I think my hiccups have stopped. You three, get the fuck out of my studio. Go on, now, go, before I change my mind. Go, before I change my mind. Jenny, lock the doors. Jenny, lock the doors. Yes, Jeremy. Now, good. Yes, now. Right. Yes. You in the broadcast centre. You in the broadcast Alex, you listen to me. You pay attention. Now, I'm sure you've already loaded up exactly what you're going to play in the commercial, but today is going to be a little bit different. Look to your right. Yes, really. Look to your right. There is a VHS tape, and I want you to load it into one of the machines, and when I say so, and not before, you play it. You've got about 15 seconds, so I wouldn't waste any time. Now, all cameras. All upstairs appreciate there may be lives at stake. They want you to know that the official policy of this channel is that we do not negotiate with terrorists. Just think before you act. One sided, all but now, we're going to show the other side for you. For a bit of fucking balance. And the good old days. Alex, play your fucking tape. I don't want to hurt any of you. I see anything I don't like, I will not hesitate to start. Oh, Alex, you're going to get me in trouble with that. Let's hope you made the we right call. We've got the system for the third segment. I imagine the ratings are going to be through the roof. How long? How long? 17 seconds. And the studio doors are all still locked? Yes. So what now? I don't know. This wasn't what I planned. I mean, some of it was. I had speech! Look! But this... This was unexpected. So what now, Jeremy? It was supposed to be your day off. It was supposed to be your God. day off. Please, uh, don't do any more stupid things today. Please, How long? How long, Jenny? How long? We're already live. Welcome back to the National Mighty News. Welcome back to the National Joining me unexpectedly, for I very much imagine will be my last broadcast, are two new guests. Jenny works here at the National Nightly News Jenny and is someone I consider, well, a friend. Well, and next to her is, and next to her is, what's your name? Andy. What's your name? Andy's a policeman. Only, Andy. we don't call him that anymore. Only He's a community cohesion official. He's a community officer. cohesion officer. Sorry? It's, um, it's community cohesion officer, CCO. And how's that feel, Andy? Being rebranded? It's, uh, it's good. <laughs> it's, it's not about confrontation anymore. You know, the, the force had its fair share of problems. The, uh, the team doesn't have as many. But it still has some. 
I couldn't say. Couldn't or wouldn't? I don't know what you want me to say. Christ, you're fucking useless, aren't you? We'll come back to you later. Jenny? Don't want to be on the news, Jeremy. That's perfectly understandable. Who'd want to do this? Jenny. Why did you join the National Miami News Team? I always wanted to work in news. Yes, but why specifically this program? Yes, but why the National program? Nightly the News. It was the news everyone trusted. Was. Was. Is. Do you really want to quibble semantics at gunpoint? Is there something else you'd rather discuss? Is there something else? There's a great big Alan James sized elephant in the room you seem to be ignoring. What do you mean? I saw your face when that hood came down. You didn't know, did you? It's about the message, not the messenger. It's about the message, not the messenger. No. no. I didn't know. No. The people I met were with. I he wasn't there. I didn't know it was Alan J. I'm sorry. But seriously. I'm sorry. Alan. Seriously. Fucking James. <laughs> You're flushing your life down the toilet. For... God, I love you, Jeremy, but. God, I love you, Jeremy. He's a good speaker. He's a good speaker. He's popular in the country. He's popular in the country. That right. That right. Look, forget Alan James. There is still forget something Alan. deeply wrong. There is still something deeply wrong. And you know it, Jenny? Wrong. And you know it, Andy? And you know it, Jenny? And you, you are home. You know it too. And you, you are home. Meanwhile, you know too. I'm interviewing a guest you. who stinks of I'm shit. Patrick is paddling about in shit. And Robin, Robin is literally interviewing someone who collects the fucking stuff. I mean, it's not sophisticated, but what a metaphor. We are sleepwalking our way into oppression, and the news isn't saying anything. We're not saying anything. Says who? Our fucking journalists. What are all those scientists working on at Grantham Downs? What are they testing underground at Altergrave? Andy, your turn. Make yourself fucking useful. How many people have you brought in for consultations just because they weren't carrying or didn't have team membership cards? Oh, well, there's other forms of identification that we will accept. For how long? We're just here to help. Then why do you need these? Then why do you need these? Not really help when it's offered at gunpoint, is it, Andy? Let me demonstrate it for you. Let me help you. Let me help you. You eat these cards of my notes on it, you and you'll probably digest a fact. And That'd be helpful, wouldn't it, Andy? That'd Knowing a fact? Well, well, I don't understand. Do you want my help, yes, Andy? Yes, yes, whatever you say, Security yes. Security are here, Jeremy. Eat it. Security are here, Jeremy. What? Eat, it. eat the fucking news, Andy, or eat. I'll force it down your fucking throat. Jeremy, stop. Go on. Really? Eat it. Eat it, you fucking eat bully. It. Jeremy, stop. They will kill you. Please. Don't make me watch that. Of course. You're right. Sorry. Sorry, everyone. Sorry, everyone. You can put the card down now, Andy. You can put the card down now. You can go now. You too, Jenny. Fuck off over there. You too, Jenny. Fuck off over there. Then Jenny done. All cameras on me. All cameras on me. This new regime of ours is so this new regime of ours seductive. Is so I understand that. But before we all hand off our freedoms, should we ask to whom we're handing them over? Don't you want to know what's being done in your name? How many people were transitioned last month? A record high. Again, if you care. Again. Shouldn't someone ask advance? How they plan to deal with this blockade? How many years or months of supplies we have? Why aren't we asking these questions instead of who shit is this? There's a cat backstage dressed as a fucking goalie for Christ's sake. He's even got the little gloves. He's even got the little gloves. Anyway, that's why I arranged for you to see that broadcast from the last break. I didn't know it was going to be him. But I guess that just about sums it up. We are all up Ship Creek with a paddle made of Alan fucking James. Christ, it's also 
Christ, it's also fucking pointless. I was going to quit tonight. Take a holiday. Try something else. Out of the limelight. Maybe try having a relationship. I hear they're nice. Never tried. I. I loved the news. I loved And now, well. God, Jeremy, don't! I've tried my best to be honest with you. But this just isn't the news anymore. And I'm sorry. I've lost the spike. Please, we can't show this cut to the ads. My name's Jim Donald. Do it now! If you can. Somehow. And I envy you. Have a peaceful night. Jeremy!
Thanks. It's Boozman here. Hope all's well with the family. Just a heads up, we're expecting those troublemakers at Disrupt to attempt to hack the channel during the broadcast. So keep an eye on the interference screen and stay out of the orange. Let's keep the news on the air. It's important, now more than ever. So, Julia's team have asked me to ask you to keep it light. Well, what does that mean? You need to do that thing you do where you turn politicians into humans. Just don't get drawn into talking about the war. Politics in general. Is. They do know this is the news, don't they? You don't hear this from me, but... oh. Apparently, there's a crew at Team HQ right now. I think she's giving a speech or something tonight. I'll get it on the late news. Oh, great. So they get the brains and we get the performing monkey. Sometimes you sound just like him, you know. How are you? It is what it is. It is what it is. I miss him too, you know. Ten seconds, everybody. Going in five, four, three. It's time to join Megan and the team. Good evening. This is the National Nightly News. I'm Megan Wolf. It's the 140th day of war. Our main headlines tonight. Company of Heroes. Skirmishes on land and sea again today as our armed forces tested the metal of the World Council's illegal blockade. Advances strategy of multiple small-scale incursions into the disputed zone is certainly keeping the enemy on high alert. Unable to work out where or when the next strike will come. Sadly, however, more casualties were reported today and as the weeks and months of this war make ever more demands on our armed services, those numbers will, tragically, only continue to rise. Don't starve. Advance's food programme moved from strength to strength today as rationing depots were opened in the last remaining unfed areas of the territory. The rationing depots have been constructed in record time and the government's agricultural coordination strategy has seen shelves restocked with increasing regularity. And judging by the looks on this happy family's faces, it can't come a moment too soon. They'll be getting a good meal tonight on the government, just like the rest of us. Seven days to die. The recent decision to allow those with long-term health conditions to access transition centres has today been declared an overwhelming success. Previously available only to those in their final years, the expansion of the service has been met with relief by the many organisations calling for it to be opened up to the wider community. The transition centres have reported larger than expected numbers, but report that they are coping well and able to provide a complete and meaningful service to all who choose to use it. Populous. More than 11% of the population have thus far failed to register for a team membership card, a worrying statistic given that the cards are a legal requirement from midnight tonight. It's up to the other 89% of us to remind our tardy friends that not taking advantage of all the exclusive services available to cardholders is now, as it should be, absolutely criminal. Start me up. Disrupt spokesman Alan James held an impromptu rally today in the northern city of Mankipur. Large crowds gathered to hear the band speaker prove Disrupt are still able to capture the public's imagination. A representative from the Manklipool Community Cohesion Team described the event as mostly peaceful. But it looks like Disrupt aren't going quietly into the night. And finally, absent friends. Sad news today as the grave of former National Nightly News host Jeremy Donaldson is vandalised by radical Disrupt activists. The much-loved broadcaster suffered a very tragic public breakdown ten weeks ago in an incident which ultimately cost him his life. A passionate and rebellious man, always willing to question authority, Jeremy was posthumously celebrated with a team service award by Advance for his outstanding dedication to journalistic truth. But first tonight, with the war about to enter its 21st week, I'll be chatting with Peter Clement live in an exclusive team talk from his home in Lanfordshire. Don't go away. You won't want to miss a second of tonight's National Nightly News.
programme, I'm thrilled to say I'll be chatting with mega pop star Lil C, who's going to be treating us to a world premiere of her new single. And then after that, in part three, we've got something new I promise you won't want to miss. But first tonight, let's check in with Prime Minister Peter Clement, who's coming to us through the magic of television all the way from his home in Lanfordshire. Are you receiving me, Prime Minister? Loud and clear, Miss Wolf. Loud and clear. Well, let's start with the obvious. What's that in your hand, Prime Minister? Cheeky cow. <laughs> but yeah, it's true. 75 days without an alcoholic drink, and I've got to say, I'm beginning to feel the benefits. It certainly looks that way. Well, I made a promise to Mrs. C, and as my old man used to say... Uh, a promise is worth keeping? Uh, I'm a summer like that, only with assholes. <laughs> So, I've heard from my sources that you and the illustrious Mrs. C plan to take your winter break somewhere a little different this year. That's right. We're planning a walking holiday right here in the territories, which is different for us because, like you, Megan, I've always been a big fan of those warm foreign beaches. Did you make this decision because of the blockade, Prime Minister? Well, now that's a good question. Well, as you know, while the blockade has effectively restricted the flow of goods into the country, we and our neighbours have continued to allow unimpeded travel for business leaders, ministers and such. So, although me and the missus could theoretically go to that gorgeous beach I just mentioned, it just doesn't smell much like team spirit to me. After all, as the old man used to say, when life gives you shite, make shite pie. <laughs> It works just as well with lemons and lemonade. Prime Minister, maintaining a healthy body like yours at a time of national crisis must require some demanding planning. What's your regime and how do you go about it all? Well, the truth be told, it's all down to Claude, my infinitely patient personal trainer. He's a man with a plan. I'm just the prat with a fat. Well, on that very subject, how are you and Mrs C handling living on rations? Well, let me tell you, Megan, back in the 50s, when I worked for you backstage for your Patrick Brannan's dad, did you know I did that? I think everyone knows that. I miss that. Well, what you probably didn't know was that Graham Bannon was a right tightwad, paid the bare bloody minimum and still found every possible excuse he could to dock your pay even further. I remember he once docked me a whole fiver for having an unacceptably smelly lunchbox type bastard. Anyway. What I'm saying is back then I ate a lot less than I am now, even under rationing. We all did. And let's face it, there are still plenty of people in this country who could afford to lose a little bit of weight. What are you implying? No, but seriously, <laughs> Prime Minister, we know you're very busy, but one final question, if I may. Oh, well, go on then. Uh, when you get home from a long day, your head full of the territory's hopes and fears, what music do you listen to when you work out to take your mind off things? Well, I know I've got a bit of a reputation for being an old fuddy-duddy, but I'd be lying if I didn't say there's something about little C that just demands one's attention. <laughs> well, let's hope you stay watching, Prime Minister, because she is going to be talking and performing live after the break. Oh, I'll be watching. After all, as my old man used to say, everything's a treat on a boring Friday with nothing but the window you shouldn't. It's, it's Wednesday, Prime Minister. I think the expression still stands. Peter Clement, thank you for joining me. I don't know about you at home, but I think there's something kind of inspirational there. I know I feel safer. When we come back, Lil C is going to be giving us the debut performance of her new single, and I'll be getting to meet her. As her biggest fan, I don't mind telling you, I'm pretty excited. Don't go away. We'll be back after these messages. We'll be back. One minute back. <laughs> Gripping stuff. Was that even news? I think you forgot to ask him what his favourite number is. Oh, I must have forgotten that in all the excitement. <laughs> so assuming it's not vodka, what do you think is actually in that milk? I reckon it's the tears of his enemies. You are one disturbed individual. Tower Coke. And to make sure that you stay free to enjoy all of the benefits of our new society. We are not a territory that chooses to live in fear. We will not cower or avert our eyes at the sight of injustice. For we are a brave and daring people. You'll no doubt have spotted the updated mixing desk. You'll need the new buttons during the next sections. First, we'll need applause when the guest enters and before her song. Don't worry, I'll walk you through it when we get there. We have built world-leading scientific and cultural communities 
As a team, we have kept our people well fed throughout this war. Because as a team, we cannot fail to thrive, even in this most challenging of times. And one day, soon now, when this turbulent time is behind I've never us, heard of her before. We will oh, she's big, really big. Really? Future. Is she any good? As a team. Nah, of course not. She talks shit. Advance. Oh. Our kids go mad for her, absolutely mad. Live in 10 seconds. Hang on, Colin, you've got kids. Yeah, I've got about six or seven, I think. What? Five, four, <laughs> three. Thanks for coming back. Later, we have an Thanks exciting new feature that we Later, just know you're going to love, so stay tuned for that. But first, I'm really excited for our next guest. She rose to prominence as the delightful Susie May in All My Daughter's Children's Men, before taking the music industry by storm this year with her debut album smashing the chart records at the age of just 20. Let's give it up and welcome Lil C. I just say, you look incredible. Oh, you thanks, babe. I'm doing this new regime and it really does work. Ooh, what's the regime? And my manager suggested it to me. It basically involves bathing in like cabbage water and then having the leaves sucked out of you while you sleep. Wow, is, is that healthy? Oh, well, look at me, Meg. The leaves are my only nourishment. <laughs> yep, they certainly are. Now, you'll have to forgive me, but I'm somewhat of a super fan, so I'm sorry if I get a bit starstruck. Oh, bless you. I've never actually heard of you before, so if you do get a little tongue-tied, I can always carry the interview. Oh, that's good to know. So your first album, F My Face Together, it hit shelves this summer and it just exploded. I mean, what was that like for you? bonkers just yeah. so weird I was in all the papers and the magazines overnight I went from that like annoying little girl from that show to that like sexy little girl from that show wow that must have been bizarre not really it was just like any other morning you know get up at five go on a four mile run have three meetings on my cabbage bath but then only then was my dad actually talking to me oh, of course I mean the famed country singer Billy Bob Jean short I didn't know you'd been estranged there's nothing that's strange about it Megan OK, yes, he may believe that aliens told him to hate women, but there really isn't anything to prove that he's wrong. But there really isn't anything uh -huh. to prove that he's wrong. So, uh, this newfound explosion so, to your popularity, I mean, did that change your life? Um, well, I had to start wearing, like, nicer underwear, you know, for the paparazzi. But as my manager says, best to make the most of it before I'm 30. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> So what, what's the album about? So I thought it was about like how pretty and great I am, but actually it's about monetizing youth, I think, or about like promoting an unrealistic standard of beauty or something. Your manager again. <laughs> yeah, he says insecurity is an opportunity. Oh, do you think he'd be happy with you telling us all this? Telling you all what? It really doesn't matter what I say here. I'll do my dance soon and then this part will it all be forgotten about. Oh. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> we're going to see some of those famous dance moves very shortly because you're going to be performing your new single, aren't you? Yeah, it's on my album, Put It In My A Together, and it's out tomorrow. So soon, after the last one. Oh, yeah, I've actually released two albums since lunchtime and a clothing line during this interview. <laughs> so this is called Cry For Help. And it's going to be in all the best high street and retailer shops. And it's out now. So girlies, now. you know what to do. Scream and cry until somebody gets it for you. Ooh. Gets it for you. There, there she goes. Blimey. <laughs> All these projects, they're keeping you very busy, aren't they? It must be tough. Yeah, it can get tough and I hate it sometimes and I hate myself. I just want to like cry into a bath of root veg. But then I think thousands of girls would do anything to be me, so I must be quite lucky. Well, you, you know you don't have to do this though, don't you? Yeah, I do think that sometimes. Most nights between like my fourth vodka and the eighth time a stranger slaps me around the arse. I think things could have been different, you know, like better, but I don't know. I love doing autographs and having somebody dress me and tell me what to wear. <laughs> did you always want to do music? Uh, well, ever since I was a little girl, I did. I'd sit in front of the radio, and as soon as my favourite girl group would come on, I'd press record on my cassette, but then my dad would come in and tell me to turn it off and to go back upstairs and start practising again. So so, sorry, is, you, is your dad your manager? Yeah, which can be tough, and sometimes when it gets really hard, he'll say, make Quagler proud and you might just survive childbirth. <laughs> well, 
<laughs> you know what, despite anything, you'll make me proud. Oh, if only your opinion was as valuable as his. <laughs> and on that problematic note, uh, you're going to be singing your song for us soon, aren't you? Uh, tell me about it, tell me about it. So it's called These Babies Gonna Bring You Home, and I actually got sent the lyrics in the car on the way up here. But you know what, it's actually all right. And don't worry. All my work is team approved. All right then. Well, you can go and get ready for that. We'll see you in a little bit. It was a very specific type of pleasure to chat to her, and I just can't wait to hear this. Lil C with an exclusive first performance of her new track, These Babies Gonna Bring You Home. Take it away. It's the force's favorite. The queen of team, here to break in your blockades, Lil C! doesn't distract you from the world outside well, I don't know what will <laughs> I'd like to thank Lil C for well for doing that don't go anywhere after the break we'll finally be revealing the new segment of our show that we just know you're gonna love we'll be back right after this and we're out can I just say Thank you so much for letting me do this. It really means a lot to me, you know. Yeah. To be able to promote myself on such a mainstream platform like the news. Oh, well, don't worry about it. And you know what? Good luck for the future. Take care of yourself. This industry can be crazy sometimes. Watch out for that father of yours. Oh, no, no. I manage myself. It's just, you know, for the public to have that certain you know what it's like. Oh, oh right. Um, and Michael? What was Michael? What about Billy Bob Jean Shorts? Oh, my dad. He's 
such a sweetheart. We both had the same agents, you know, like it just made sense. Both of us for our image together. Wow. And Michael, I want to see the revenue share for the clothing line and get me a G&T before my meeting with the Louvre guys. If they say for your pleasure, I'm going to stop needing it. This next section will need you to use all four of the sound effects to help things along. Try and pick the most appropriate one in each given Well, the fact is, is Glenn, there were flowers in my dressing room. Right they were exactly choices. 12, as it said in your letter. Do I look like the sort of person who counts things? No, 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 not anymore. I'm better than that now. I'll tell you what, just keep adding flowers until it feels like 12. Got it? Absolutely, right away. 10 seconds. Five, four, <clears throat> three. Thanks for joining us for part three. We've been teasing you about our new feature all night, and now the wait is finally over. I can reveal that every night on the show, we'll be treated to an episode of an informative and hilarious new segment called The Notice Board. It stars some top talent, and we're very excited about it. But before we see it, let's have a quick chat with the writer, director, and phenomenon, may I say, Jeff Algebra, guys. Actually, I've, uh, I've dropped the algebra. I go by Jeff Dupoon now. How do you like that? Well, yeah, very fancy. I suppose you need a new name now that you're a successful artist. Well, exactly. I'm earning enough to pay taxes now. Oh. <laughs> it's shit. <laughs> and how does Angela feel about all this? And how does Angela feel about all this? Your, uh, your wife. Your, uh, your wife. Ah! <laughs> oh, God, no. 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 <laughs> no, she's long gone. No, she was holding me back. I'm with no, Norm now. We were married I'm last month. Norm, <laughs> Norm de Plume. Yeah. <laughs> and um, why did you write and, um, this? Hmm? What was your inspiration? Oh, well, I, I received a telephone call offering me 25 grand to write a protein sitcom. And I heard my father's voice. And I heard my father's voice. It said, Jeff. It said, you listen here, boy. You make hay while the sun shines. You ring every penny you can get out of this. So I wheeled him down to the transition center, got out my typewriter and started clacking. <laughs> Utter shite. <laughs> and without further ado, let's give it up for the notice board. Miss Craven. Morning. Oh, Miss Craven. morning, Ray. Everything morning, all right, Mrs. Ray. Craven? Everything you look right, as worried Ray. as the vicar in closing time. <laughs> oh, Ray, it's those young louts. They've vandalised my shop again. No! Yes! <laughs> They've written all sorts of obscene language and crude pictures, and I know it's those damn you. I don't know. It could be the vicar at closing time. I'm just worried they won't ever become productive members of the community. What if they never see the error of their ways and end up a social outcast, such as shoplifters or bong rats? Don't worry, Mrs Craven. This is a very supportive community, and I'm sure that in time they will fit into this society like this key into this lock. <laughs> See? <laughs> Works like a charm. What a lovely way to put it, Ray. And just like that, we can unlock their future. Yes, yes. Wow. Look at all the letters in my collection today. Oh, I think that one's addressed to me. What? This, this one? 
Oh, so you're right. Here it is. <laughs> it's a letter from my granddaughter, Bre Brenda. She says she got an A on her maths exam because one of her friends has been helping her. She was always a team player, was our Brenda. What's up, losers? What's up, losers? Oh, no. It's no. Brad. He's the coolest Brad. guy in the village. That's right. I just got here on my motorbike. Oh, clear off, Brad. We don't want any of your ilk around here. What? Brad dudes? No, ruffians. Have you come to tag the notice board with your gang signs? No way. I've actually come to pin my resume on that notice board. I'm looking to do some tutoring after school. What did you say? Tutoring? That's right. Tutoring? Maths is very That's important. Right. Would you mind, Ray? Not at all. Not at all. So you, a young person, have been spending your time helping others and not just urinating on churches or huffing glue? Hey, I haven't huffed glue for months. Well, blow me down! You, you know what? We misjudged you based on how young and cool you are and not on your actions. Oh, no joy! Wasn't you who vandalised my shop last night or called me a rancid old crone from the back of a chopper? No way. It can't have been me. I was too busy helping my friend Brenda with her maths homework. Could you speak up there? I thought for a minute there that you said Brenda. I did, you daft old sow. Did you hear that, Ray? Oh, yes, what a wonderful surprise. I now respect you as a man. Put her there, Ray. <laughs> oh, what the heck? Give us a hug. to interrupt the first groundbreaking episode of the notice board, but uh, we are receiving some breaking news. Um, I'm being told we are picking up reports from across the continent of what appear to be... Uh, what appear to be nuclear explosions in four major foreign cities. Initial estimates put the death toll into... Initial estimates put the death toll into... Uh, they put them into millions. Uh, millions. I'm, I'm being told we're experiencing um, some power I'm shortages as a result, so apologies. Apologies for the interruption. And apparently we can go live now to team headquarters for an emergency broadcast from Prime Minister Julia Salisbury um, any moment. Yes. Yes, let's go to that now. Yes. Yes, let's go to that now. Good evening, citizens and leaders of the world. Minutes ago, operatives working for Advance detonated nuclear explosives simultaneously in four major cities across the continent. We have similar devices in 58 other urban centres and will not hesitate to detonate them if our conditions are not met in full and without delay. The people of our territory will no longer tolerate your illegal and genocidal blockade. You are to remove it immediately. We will accept nothing less than your unconditional surrender. 
Your territories will be taken under our control. We will install replacement governments to ensure that your citizens become part of the new future. Your borders are now our borders. Your people are our people. They will finally be fed and clothed and educated and healed. But for your privileged few, the moment that they feared is now upon them. Allow me to be crystal clear. If you fire a single shot at our territory, or harm a single one of our citizens, we will not hesitate to detonate further devices. You will not find them, but no doubt you are already searching for them. Our technology is decades ahead of yours. We will expect your complete acceptance of our terms by midnight tonight. Thank you. Thank you. I, I don't really talk about my personal life in my job. It's not relevant or important. Um, or important. So many of you may be surprised to learn that I have a brother. His name is David. His name is David. And right now I. And right now I. I can't get a stupid face out of my head. He's a researcher and he's currently travelling the continent for work. He's currently travelling the continent for work. And I don't I don't know where he is right now. I don't know where he is right now. And I should imagine that there are many of you sitting at home tonight digesting this this news and you also have loved ones on the continent. You also have in Urkishdan or Harvia or San Palmarino or or Konislava, which is where David was when I last spoke to him 3 days ago. So when I tell you, I know how you are feeling so tonight, you, believe, I me, I do. You feeling tonight. believe me, I do. But I also know that there's, there's a flow to events. I see it every day here. I know that although tonight it feels like we may be in a time of fear and darkness, we may actually be at the break of a new dawn. We don't know that yet. We can't know that yet. But together we will find out. And I will be here every night, feeling what you are feeling. And with your help, maybe we can all get to that brave new world. My name's Megan Wolf. My name's Megan. Let's make tomorrow better. Let's make tomorrow. And we're out. I've got people ringing round, but the telephone networks are overloaded. We'll find him. Do we know exactly exactly which cities were hit? Or Megan. Megan. We will find him.
But before we go, one final thought. Hi, I'm Alex. I'm Andy. And I'm Den. J Jay, we said Zoom backgrounds. Oh, sorry boys. We're the developers of Not For Broadcast and we want to thank you so much for supporting our little game so far. We're now two thirds of the way through the story. But as we film this in January 2021, the UK is back in lockdown. We don't know when we'll next be able to film with a full cast and crew. So once again, we have to ask you to please be patient with us. And if you want to talk to us in the meantime, Come chat with us on Discord at discord.gg slash notforbroadcast. We stream on Twitch every first and third Thursday of the month at twitch.tv forward slash notgamesuk. We always check the Steam forums for any suggestions or problems you may have. And we read every Steam review, even the horrible ones, because your opinion matters to us. So all that remains to say is thank you so much for playing our weird little game. And... See you, See you in episode three, 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 maybe, probably. You know, if I have come up with a kill by then, I will let you know. Um, last time I did so well for me. Good evening, I'm Megan Wolf. And I'm Jeremy Donaldson.